the amino terminal groups of the four polypeptide chain. So to see what that actually forms, let's take a look at the following equation. So this is the carbon dioxide, the nonpolar carbon dioxide, and this is the terminal residue, the amino terminal residue. So in the presence of a special enzyme, this is basically transformed into the following group known as the carbamate. So this carbamate contains a negative charge. And just like we form salt bridges in this case, this can also form, the carbamate can also form a salt bridge, thereby stabilizing the entire T-state structure of the deoxyhemoglobin. And by the same token, the stabilization of the deoxyhemoglobin's T-state also shifts the curve to the right side, thereby decreasing the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen and allowing to actually unload, unload more uh, more O2 molecules to the exercising tissue of our body. So this entire discussion basically is known as the Bohr effect. So the Bohr effect is basically the effect that is observed when hydrogen ions and carbon dioxide ions together create the pH effect and the carbon dioxide effect and basically shift the curve to the right side and that means they decrease the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen allowing the hemoglobin to release more oxygen to the, re uh, to the resting tissues as well as to the exercising tissues of our body.